Hello everyone, TG here and welcome to another video. Today I want to be covering Denethor's event. It is halfway done almost, so yeah, this might be too late for some people. But if you haven't done the event yet, we're going to have a little look at how you can beat tier 6 and tier 7 with minimal investment. So if you're ready, let's take a closer look. So here's what you can beat uh, Denethor tier 6 with, that means his free star that everyone gets. This is minimal investment, what uh, someone from the guild, DK crew, was able to accomplish with, and I was pretty impressed when I saw it. Uh, this is not me, I because I wanted to use Gondor and I really dug into them uh, with my resources and gold and everything. Uh, I didn't want to take the chance and figure out what the minimum was because there was no need for it. However, this is what he managed to do it with level 32, gear tier 4, and basically only level up the leader ability, which is really fun, actually. From level 1 to level 2 cost you 1 gold. I found that really funny. So, this is what he was able to do it with, and I want to uh, talk about how he actually managed to then do it. So... Your setup here, like these four, are fixed. Bormir, Herondil, Faramir, and Sergeant Ara. Now, what you want to do is you want to target Robel first. So, the thing you do, you use Faramir, Special 1. Whoopsie. And then something like this happens. And this is where it's really important, because normally you would think, okay, let's go use the AoE. But you want to save that, because you want to get Robel down ASAP. Now I'm not going to show it here because I already did it and it wouldn't give a clear example because Denethor is over leveled. But basically you would go like this and then you would mark Robel. You need Faramir to get your assist. It's a little bit hit and miss. And then you want to use Denethor special one because it gets assists uh, from Boromir and if you're lucky you can also get an assist from Faramir. So that's basically how you want to do it and then uh, Boromir you don't want to use a special one for the taunt because uh, you need him to be able to survive in order to do his AoE and then also at that point if you're lucky you have Faramir uh, no, you should have Faramir alive and if you're lucky Herondil is still alive that means that you are actually getting a lot of AoE down, and that is something that you really need. So this is minimal, minimal investment. Now let's take a look at tier 7, which is the 5-star. And this is also from a guildmate. Not me, I just invested into them. I did it with 2,800, I believe. But this is what he uh, did it with, and it's the same procedure. You target Robel first, then ideally you want to hit Yef2 second. Might not be possible due to the stacks of Provoke on Wubite, and you have to get through them. And then it's kind of like you have to do some tests to see can you get Wubite down without you have to being really lucky, or can you switch over, etc. There's some stuff there. But basically, you have to and Wubite as 2 and 3. And then you get the AoE really helps you a lot, especially with the Robel. Ideally, the best thing you can do is when Herondil has his second turn, his AoE gets the kill, because that means he does a follow-up attack. And also, another important thing is that Herondil Special 2 can inflict Weaken. If you don't uh, get the Weaken onto multiple members, it's no reason to restart, it does make it harder. So, yeah, uh, hope for the RNG and... Um, yeah. You can get it. it. Will take you some time, but I let's just say after I swapped over and did Robel first, and then tried to target Yef2, but Wubite, and I changed my abilities. I think I got it done within 20, 30 minutes. So now that we are actually talking about Gondor, let's take a closer look here. And as you can see, they haven't really been um, invested into since last raid. It was really good. I did five million. Now what I am gonna be doing for the upcoming Raid is I want to make Faramir uh, level 60 because that way I can start investing into him. Boromir, Denethor, I kind of like where they are at the moment. Boromir, of course, I will need level 60 as well for more block, but basically, yeah, if you could go here, this is nice, but 
level 6 requires a lot of investment and that is a level uh, 60 lock so yeah I will make uh, I'll push him higher uh, I will of course invest into this first actually and I do have I might actually do it just before the next rate just so I make sure I actually have invested into it and yeah this is nice to focus but also what I want to do as you can see I've actually invested a little bit into Herondale but I decided to go against that and what I have done instead is I'm gonna start building Miri and the reason why I built Miri, I cannot say this enough. She has AoE. You need that for Chapter 1. You also need it for Chapter 3, technically. You gain Stealth. That's really good, because that means you can get your Eagle Eye and Advantage on from a Halberat lead. You can inflict Weaken. This is a guaranteed. That is massive on the Cape Troll in Chapter 2. And here, you can inflict one stack of Bleeds for two turns. Now, I wouldn't open up with this on the troll, honestly, because it has the cleanse, or I don't know if it's the first or the second turn it does it. I believe it's the second, maybe. So then I would open with it, and you ignore all of the target's armor. This is really good, and it's, um, with Eagle Eye, it's a guaranteed crit. That is also really, really nice. And you gain, actually, a bunch of damage. So, Miri will actually be great for multiple chapters. Stealth, again, you have the mechanics you can change around with. Halberad, um, you gain turn meter when they receive Eagle Eye. Attack cannot miss or be blocked. That They cannot be blocked. Like Things can still be resisted, but they cannot be blocked. And advantage, guaranteed crit on next attack. This is really good on the troll, so you could... If Elver here and Eladen wasn't that great, honestly, or if you didn't have Elrond, this would be a way to actually have a good crit team. And also here, grant deadly to all members, crit chance. This is Faramir, and he does auto, and remember, deadly doesn't go away, so there are a lot of ways to get a second topple and kill on a difficulty on a difficulty free with this team, I have envisioned my uh, Halberat will soon be the five star so basically this one of course you have to hope for the crit but considering second phase doesn't have really any uh, enrage stacks so if you open up with this then you um, then you just go and here also he does heal when they they always gain eagle eye he inflicts weak minded overall I think it's a really really good team and that is what I will be investing into. I will be building up my Gondor squad very heavily. And also, just as the last thing here, whoops, not Dwarf. My Naramiri is complete. 500, that's 200, and 300, surprise, surprise. She's now done. So that means one and two. I have two ready for Elrond. We still don't have a date on him. Eladen and Arwen, I'm working on Lomin. I've started to do two gem refreshes on. I actually stopped farming Herondil because, yes, Herondil is nice, but uh, Miri does have some AoE, so for the first bomber, so to say. And also, they will be changing, they say, sooner than we think. So, who knows? Maybe you don't need Herondil that much. You do need a good Herondil for uh, Chapter 3 if you want to score the block. But Halberad has some heal, and he's very tanky, and he can tank, actually. So I think there's a lot of wiggle room there, plus the crit and stealth mechanics for Mi uh, Miri and so on. So I think that will be a good team, and it's how I want to spend my resources the most efficiently. So I hope this guide really helped you and gave you some insight into what you can do for the next Marquis, who we don't know will be. I will try to get this video out sooner so you can take advantage of it and get the rewards from a free free star with minimal investment so you actually gain instead of spending. And see you all in the next video.